but why don't we get into one of Batman v Superman's few good points with our superhero spotlight? Select your hero. And who's this week's superhero spotlight? Wonder Woman. Oh, man. I did hear this every day in Toys R Us. So. All the world's waiting for you. Yeah. Oh, and a bear trumpet. Sorry. <laughs> I love that. Into, do, 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 I have do, not do. seen that in a long time. But anyway, so that is Wonder Woman. The just reintroduced, like had her first ever live action film appearance ever mm. in Batman versus Superman. And Gal Gadot is well cast in it. So let's start from the beginning, guys. All-Star Comics number 8, December 1941, was the first appearance of Diana Prince, a.k.a. Princess Diana, the original one. Uh, And though she also first appeared on a cover in Sensation Comics number 1, January 1942. But she was a creation of William Moulton Marston, known as Charles Moulton as his pen name at the time. And he was a... John Marston? Uh, Molston. The Molten <laughs> Marston. The Molten Man? He wasn't, you know, the usual comic book writer of the time. He was a Harvard-trained scientist who also would invent a lie detector, an early version of a lie detector. He invented it. and A he, truth lasso? And he saw that oh. through comic books, you could teach people things. He's like, this is an incredible teaching tool. That's what comic books are. And I want to teach kids that a woman can be just as powerful and awesome as any of the heroes. Mm-hmm. And he pitched a character called Wonder Woman, who was originally going to be called Super Ma. Super. <laughs> oh, no. That, really? was, that was one of the things I can't like came a, like up Like a mouth? Here. Like a ma? And no, like M-A, like your mother. Oh, ma. That Just take dumb. the N off Superman, <laughs> Super Ma. Uh, but yeah, he was introduced in there, and she was very tied to World War II from the beginning. Like, in her first thing, she's like, uh, it's time for me to leave Paradise Island. I'm going to fight the Nazis. And she's using her metal bracelets to deflect bullets. It had to have been yeah. a very scary time. America had not yet entered the war, but the Nazis were on a rampage they, and terrifying the entire country. They were on a rampage. And if the publication date is correct, then yeah. this was like Pearl Harbor just happened wow. or was about to happen. Inspired by William's wife, Elizabeth Holloway Marston, Whoa. and their partner, Oliver Byrne, a former student of his who then entered into a polyamorous relationship what? with them. three and people so. in a relationship and so he kind of combined the qualities he loved about olive and elizabeth into one character people say the physical inspiration of wonder woman mm-hmm. originally is olive and uh, the character was pretty defined lucky man then i guess <laughs> <laughs> the the character was defined pretty early on as like she has super strength unbreakable skin occasionally she can fly though in her original version she can't fly Uh, she has the power bands on her wrist that deflect bullets and she has a lasso of truth which originally was a lasso that made people do what you told them to do not (laughs) to tell the truth and she lived on an island full of women who had a lot of uh, sisterhood loving sisterhood and you could see that william uh, most molten was barely hiding things in this mm-hmm. like he you know the 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 wonder woman stuff the bondage stuff is there from the very beginning Death like by snoo snoo but it was her doing the bondage mm-hmm. though later it became more of a trope for decades oh is this the cover of a wonder woman comic she's tied up like this yeah. is it's always like she's tied up on her covers a hundred times more than Superman or Batman ever were on their covers. But yeah, that was all there from the beginning. She was very in touch with Greek gods. One of my favorite things was originally because back then people didn't know, except I bet for Marston, she had the exclamation of suffering Sappho. Oh, no, really? For real. Holy Early, crap. Her original ones were suffering Sappho, which is, is crazy. And is That is the Greek island of female to female love? Uh, or something it, like that? S- Sappho is the poet who wrote about women's love on, oh, yeah. on the island of Lesbos. Lesbos. And uh, so if you've heard, like, lesbianism or lesbian love described as sapphic, it is for Sappho. And yes. that was her catchphrase. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Suffering Sappho. It was kind of stamped out there. But yeah, she was thought of as an ambassador to peace in a time when the world is at the darkest it's ever been, seemingly, in World War II. Which is also strange because the movie takes place in World War I. So it's it's weird that mm-hmm. like she's so tied to WW2, it's where they take her back. Mm-hmm. I think they only did it so she could say, I've been gone for 100 years. Mm-hmm. 
She meets her boyfriend, Steve Trevor, and it's also key to the things. Steve Trevor is her constant male companion. Even from the beginning, he wasn't... When people said Batman was gay, that's when they created Batwoman, Aunt Harriet, and other yes. women. Aunt just, Harriet, that'll, that'll show them. Yes. Well, they somehow thought it was less gay for Batman to live with an old aunt instead of, a, <laughs> uh, instead of an English butler. Like, it was somehow less gay. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, meanwhile, with Wonder Woman, she had a guy pal from the beginning, and that's Steve Trevor, who is a... Uh, an American soldier who crash lands on Paradise Island and Wonder Woman accompanies him back to the mainland to help him fight the Nazis. Marston saw her as an ambassador of peace, wearing the colors of the U.S. flag, which would later get put into her origin story later on. And yeah, she was always about compelling truth and she has expert level fighting skills. Back then, she was also one of the first members of the Justice Society. Mm -hmm. She was their secretary. God. (laughs) That... That would be retcon. That would be retcon. (laughs) They fired her? (laughs) I'm a secretary who can throw the building at you. Also at the... Oh, you boys. (laughs) Also in uh, Marston's original version, he introduced the supporting character of Etta Candy. She is fat, and that's funny. (laughs) Her thing is that she loves chocolate, and she... Though by, 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 by average American standard of today, she is not yeah. fat. She is average size. But back in 1940, she was fat and she was constantly like, uh, can I just have chocolate? Uh, Wonder Woman wears a chocolate. Like, Eat a candy. Yes. <laughs> Eat a candy. Uh, they've... Now you see why Stan Lee looked, yes. like, a, Stan Lee looked like a genius. <laughs> they've rebooted her many times to be like, no, she is an old friend of hers who is a full-figured gal, but we're not mocking her. She's a friend of Wonder Woman's. And they're still sticking with Etta Candy because she is a supporting character in the 2017 film. She's being played by the actress who played Dawn on the UK office. Okay. Who was who also oh, really? uh, who's also like one of the victims or sur- well actually she did not survive in Shaun of the Dead. I'm uh, always have a weird crush on her because that stupid show. Yeah, she's uh, I love her, but she's gonna be Etta Candy. That's Etta uh, gonna, Candy. she'll be famous as Etta Candy. If, if Daredevil had a friend named Fugly Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and also, yeah, Steve Trevor, he's going to be played by Chris Pine, who you mm-hmm. did see a picture of him in BVS. Mm-hmm. Spoilers. He uh, slowly becomes an actual reincarnation of William Shatner. <laughs> uh, so in the Golden Age, she did get kind of her own solo book. She she had solo adventures, uh, though she was never as popular as Batman or Superman, though nobody was in DC. It wasn't just her. But there was Batman and Superman and then everybody else. Uh, but so, yeah, we get through the 50s. Marston dies in 1947 at a very early age. Then his two wives, or whatever the you'd call them, they just live together and raise their kids. And they are just a couple for till the rest of their, to the end of their days in the 90s. One of them lives to be 100, 100 years old. That kind of, put her through decades of nothing her having silly books of starting and restarting a bunch of dudes writing her who don't get her and in 1968 denny o'neill or dennis o'neill decided he'd take a stab at making wonder woman great again if you've heard of the classic you know green arrow green lantern hard traveling heroes thing with got him more down to earth and it's where speedy starts doing heroin right all that stuff dennis o'neill wanted to give that kind of stuff to wonder woman so in a very big, like, huge 180 change on the character, Wonder Woman is told by the Amazons that they have to leave Earth. They are being called back to the source and that Wonder Woman has to come with them. And she says, I can't leave Steve Trevor. And they say, well, you can stay, but we have to take all your powers and your Wonder Woman stuff. Mm. And so she just becomes Diana Prince, the woman. And that's it. Like, she is completely depowered. In that same issue, she meets martial arts master I Ching, who uh, teaches her all about kung fu and espionage. And so wow. then Diana Prince starts her fashion business, but that's just cover for Diana a Prince being salesman? an espionist. Uh, she's, it's cover for her being an espionage. She just wears this white jumpsuit. Are you about to say lesbianage? Lesbianage. It's yeah. cover for lesbianage. But yeah, she kind of becomes Emma Peel. Denny O'Neill admits huh. he was inspired by the British Avengers, yes. not the American Confusing the Avengers. I think it's it's a weird era for Wonder Woman and depowering an empowered woman just feels weird as a choice. I would bet he was just trying to make her more interesting. Around the same time, he messed around with Superman's powers trying to make him more interesting too. So I don't think it was a sexist thing, but who knows? Anyway, the point is, she was saved and got her powers back thanks to Gloria Steinem, of all people. In, by issue 202 
a new writer taking over for Denny O'Neill, and it got to Gloria Steinem. Wonder Woman, at least in the women's lib movement of the 70s, was an icon. Mm. And then Gloria Steinem mm. sees this current issue and says, you took away Wonder Woman's powers and her cool costume? This is dumb. And two issues later, DC was like, no oh, shit, okay, we killed off I Ching, all the Amazons are here, and uh, also Diana Prince, uh, she has memory loss, and she doesn't remember the last 30 issues, so now she's Wonder Woman again. It's okay, it's okay. Also, turn around, uh, you look in your mailbox, there's a birthday card for you, Miss Steinem, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, the Earth the Earth One stuff kind of put her more Grecian. Paradise Island became the Themyscira, the, the one we know more as as modern day fans it also introduced a teen sidekick named donna troy as wonder girl wow. who had no origin she donna exists. troy donna troy as she, a psychic sidekick yes. oh sidekick. sidekick i was thinking of deanna troy no, <laughs> that is interesting and i was like wow anyway now, but donna troy was her sidekick and, yeah. a, and her representative on teen titans but she existed because of an editorial mistake an editor just thought a wonder girl that's wonder woman's sidekick and then they just created her in a story and so we said no wonder woman doesn't have a sidekick well she does now yeah also wonder woman was a founding member of the justice league it was a similar situation there too where superman and batman kind of watched the justice league do their thing they let green lantern flash wonder woman martian manhunter and aquaman be the core original justice league and superman and batman help from the side and so wonder woman is of creator of justice league this was also when she was having her invisible jet man just have an invisible jet wow it Why? never looks stupid you'll never look stupid <laughs> certainly not of course talking about earth one in the 70s we should mention what I would say is still her most famous mainstream thing, at least maybe up to now. The 1975 to 1979 Linda Carter series, Wonder Woman, which uh, we heard the intro before. In your satin tights, hot. A hot sound. Take it home. Reminds me of stocking Game Boy Color worm lights. <laughs> <laughs> it was you know, um, so, shockingly there was actually a TV movie in 1974 of a different Wonder Woman live action thing, just to test the waters if Wonder Woman would work. And then they did it for real with Linda Carter, and it was a big hit at the start. It only huh. lasted four years because it kind of like peaked and then immediately went back down again, kind of like Batman '66. Uh. But it inspired a ton of imitators. Like the Incredible Hulk show wouldn't exist without Wonder Woman. There was that Shazam series that was made that was basically like boy wonder woman oh bonnie <laughs> it, it was a new it was a whole new level of stuff to it it was even it was so big that when they did the second spider-man superman crossover book hulk and wonder woman were shoved into it not uh, because they wanted it to be fan service but because they said they're both hot tv stars right now yeah. so people will buy this because they're in the comic book it, it was a big time for linda carter is still identified as wonder woman to this day so little has changed I, I also saw Wonder Woman has a slot machine in Vegas based on the show as well. Easy, Hank. And uh, <laughs> Steve, Steve Trevor was in the show. It was kind of similar to it, though there are great gifts out there of, say, Wonder Woman riding a skateboard with a Wonder Woman helmet on, <laughs> which you really wouldn't need because, yeah. That's uh, the point of a superhero. But also in the mid-70s, she did appear on Super Friends as well. Hi, Wonder Woman. I thought I heard your jet. I hear you're trying to come up with a fun class project. Yeah, got any ideas? A dandy one. I'll show you how to make what I call a spinning pencil top. <laughs> yep. God. Uh, <laughs> I mean, those were one of those government like, mandated <laughs> it just, 60 seconds of nice. It just sounds like everyone smoked six packs a day back then. <laughs> I have a dandy one. You don't get any cigarettes until you finish your homework. You? <laughs> that show also had her facing who I guess is her Joker is Cheetah. Even uh, though yeah. Cheetah is completely outmatched by her power wise, but they kind of just have to say, Oh, Cheetah has claws that can cut her. It's magic. And right. Cheetah also in the Super Friend show was a woman in a furry costume. And yeah. by the late 80s, she would just be a furry. And and the, the sexiest furry there is. So yeah, she was doing all that. She kind of had books on and off again. And Crisis on Infinite Earth comes, as it always does in a DC superhero spotlight. Yeah. But it hit Diana hardest of all compared to Batman and Superman. Neither of their books ended. They both got a reboot. But their books kept going. They weren't even renumbered. Like Superman, huh. 
Action Comics, Detective Comics, Batman, they kept going. Wonder Woman ended, and Wonder Woman disappeared. She was gone for a year. She didn't appear in any books uh, in the first year of post-crisis. It was because they were waiting for George Perez to do Ah. the reboot. He had picked it like, I want Wonder Woman. He was the artist on Crisis on Infinite Earths, and he wanted to reboot Wonder Woman. And a, a core thing to that was she had never existed before then. She had no right. background to it. Batman and Superman, Green Lantern, all those folks, they've been doing stuff. Wonder Woman never had. And it was an interesting new starting point for her. She had just been formed from clay, had just left the mascara, and then meets Batman and Superman who are already doing stuff. But unfortunately, that robbed her of her legacy. Mm-hmm. She not only had never, there had never been a Wonder Woman who was in World War II, and there had never been a Wonder Woman who formed the Justice League. Aww. Black Canary took her place as the woman on mm-hmm. the team who formed the Justice League, which was really too bad for her. It also set up more of her relationship with Hippolyta, her mother, who would go on to be renamed as the original Wonder Woman in World uh. War II, thanks to time travel. And Ares was her main villain in that, which was a god on the level of somebody she could actually fight. Right. Like he, Ares, the god of war against a woman who wants to force peace. Mm-hmm. It's, it's an interesting dynamic. In 1992, issue 92 to be exact... Uh, Wonder Woman was not saved from the bullshit that was happening to Superman and Batman either. She got replaced. Uh. She They have a second contest to see who will be Wonder Woman to represent Themyscira in Man's World. And she loses. She loses to Artemis. A woman named Artemis who is a more hardcore jerk hole of uh, Amazon. So she's the Asbats too. She is the Asbats. Uh. And, and she replaces her for eight issues uh. as the more aggro Wonder Woman. <laughs> And then she dies and says, "Okay, Wonder Woman, you can be you can be Wonder Woman again." It was You'll be you. It was a long term plan where Hippolyta fixed the match, so Wonder Woman Diana would lose and lose the title of Wonder Woman because she had seen the prophecy that Wonder Woman would die. So she didn't want her daughter to die as Wonder Woman. So she mm-hmm. she took her mantle away. But yeah, anyway, she got the Wonder Woman stuff back. There was also a bit where she briefly died in the late nineties. Hippolyta replaced her. Uh, like she was a member of the JLA and she also then went back in time and had adventures in World War II, thus retconning her not being in World War II uh-huh. as a Wonder Woman was there. There's one other thing George Perez introduced in his reboot of Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman didn't love killing and she didn't kill often. But if she was forced to kill someone or not, she mm-hmm. wouldn't find another way. She'd be like, well, then I must kill you. Like right. That was her choice. And she's a, she's the still the one with clean hands in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> That's weird. That's really weird that in BVS, she's the one who doesn't like chop someone's head off or whatever. And that comes to a head in Infinite Crisis. There's a character, Maxwell Lord, who has mind control abilities. He mind controls Superman and Superman nearly kills Batman and is about to kill Wonder Woman. And Wonder Woman finds out Maxwell Lord is in control. And Lord says, I will never let go of Superman. You'll have to kill me first. Ha ha ha. And on national TV, she snaps his neck. And Superman and Batman kind of judge her for that. Like, you killed him. Like, you killed that guy. She says, he was in control of a weapon more powerful than a dozen nukes. Controlling Superman is the worst thing, and I made my choice. And it caused a rift in them that was played out in Infinite Crisis. It was really interesting. I, I, I liked where they took Diana in that. And... Again, if people say, like, well, you don't like when superheroes kill people, I'm okay if Diana does it, honestly. I think she she chooses when she does it. She, she doesn't just do it willy-nilly. Infinite Crisis rebooted the timeline that made it so Diana was a founding member of the Justice League again. Yay! For the reboot we have planned for August. <laughs> and they even tried to bring back in the Diana Prince I Ching stuff, where... If she was in the identity of Diana Prince, she had no powers. And then she would do the Linda Carter spin dance right. and transform into Wonder Woman and have the powers. And I Ching was a part of it, too. It was this interesting attempt attempt by the writer of it. He wanted to incorporate all parts of Diana, all the campy stuff, all the, all the warrior stuff, all at once. It would have worked, too, if he hadn't been late on every script. Also around the same time the DCAU happened, uh, she appeared in the first episode of the Justice League series. She had never been on the Batman or Superman animated series, but she was on DCAU. And the only thing I wanted to talk about there is, other than she was played very well by Susan Eisenberg, yeah. I really enjoyed the sexual tension between her and Batman. Yeah. No dating for the Batman. It might cut into your brooding time. One. Dating within the team always leads to disaster. Two, 
You're a princess from a society of immortal warriors. I'm a rich kid with issues. Lots of issues. And three, if my enemies knew I had someone special, they wouldn't rest until they'd gotten to me through her. Next. She smashes something and be like, I'm tougher than you, Batman. Yeah. And that's a portrayal I've liked in the comics, too, of saying, if it is a pure hand-to-hand combat thing, even if they had the equal power levels, she would beat Batman. Mm. Batman would have to cheat to beat her, and he has, like in the Tower of Babel story we talked right. about a couple episodes ago. Then there was a terrible J. Michael Straczynski reboot of her, which like hmm. was flushed down the toilet in six issues. Is it a Wonder Woman totem? No, she got depowered and lost her memories and everybody forgot about her. And it was a really dumb, soft reboot that DC rejected after six issues. Mm. Then New 52 happened and Diana is the warrior. She's a warrior brought to the city by Steve Trevor. It was a change, too, that Steve Trevor had been still a World War II vet up until this point. Now he is a secret agent, former army dude who is her liaison in the world of man. And she, from the start, is a member of the Justice League, too. She is a forming, forming member of the Justice League in the Jeff Johns origin story with Jim Lee. Also, Brian Azzarello's run in New 52 is one of the best parts hmm. of New 52. He did a great job with her darkening it, but also taking real stuff from Greek mythology and making it work in this like much more brutal world that wonder woman lives in when you find out why themiscara has no men on it it's it is a fucked up moment and she also then became in a relationship with superman which was the first time that ever happened in the comics even though you figure like well yeah of course they date they're the only two people who could date each other right they they even publish a superman slash wonder woman book that is both about their relationship and them fighting crime together it, it got a lot of uh coverage in the media so it kind of stuck around for a few years though i believe they are broken up now but then again in the rebirth reboot of dc who knows what anything is anymore if i could direct you to a few good wonder woman stories to read i would definitely say the perez run is pretty good gail simone did a very good run greg rooka had a very very good run on it same with Phil Jimenez, Brian Azzarello. I really like what's happening in DC Bombshells as well. And of course, you should watch the Justice League Unlimited series. There's a lot of great episodes with Wonder Woman in there. As for movies, like we said, never had a movie until the one that's coming out in 2017. In 2007, Joss Whedon tried to make a Wonder Woman movie, and then Warner Brothers got cold feet. And, yeah. and four years later, he would make a billion-dollar film. Yeah. And then also in 2011... They then tried to do a pilot for a Wonder Woman TV, or they did a pilot for a Wonder Woman TV show that would be more campy, like the old, the Linda Carter show. Mm -hmm. They filmed one, you can see pictures of her in the costume, but it it was not taken. It was, and I couldn't find video of it other than the opening they made for it, which was just a cover of the 70s Wonder Woman song. Right. The upcoming film is directed by Patty Jenkins. She directed Monster. That was her uh, major film directing mm. credit. Yeah, stars Gal Gadot, and she did a great job in BVS, I thought. I really look forward to her as the warrior princess. Chris Pine is the boyfriend, and it takes place in World War One. and it seems like the least campy Wonder Woman we have seen today. I guess she's also in video games, too. I should mention that. Like she, she's a combatant in that Justice League Task Force game mm. that we streamed. She's also in Injustice. I don't believe there has ever been a Wonder Woman video game. Like just her. Really? You know, video games are very good at catering to women and making women <laughs> the lead character in games. But shockingly, I don't think Wonder Woman's ever had one. Yeah, maybe some random PC game or yeah. something. Perhaps. Sinclair. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, but that is a superhero spotlight. Select the hero. 